Unexpected Abundance, a reflection for the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Back in 2012, I spent a week at Topsail Beach, North Carolina with my family. Though I took responsibility for organizing this adventure, I stopped short of a hard and fast meal plan. Instead, we agreed that each household would bring breakfast favorites and ingredients for one dinner. Lunch would be an occasion for foraging among the leftovers. The final lunch turned out best as we emptied all the plastic containers in the fridge and revisited the memorable meals we had shared together. To this day, a cold turkey sandwich with mayo, salt, and pepper consumed in the mid-evening after feast, walk, nap, and or football says thanksgiving to me far more than hot dishes jockeying for position on an overcrowded table or an overflowing plate. Good soup tastes better on the second day after cooling and reheating have mingled the flavors more subtly. Some even say that the best spaghetti sauce tastes great cold on leftover pasta. The two stories that unfold in this Sunday's first reading and gospel each feature a large crowd, a little food, a pessimist or two, a steady prophet, and lots of leftovers. First, we hear Elisha, successor of Elijah, reassuring his agitated servant that the Lord will indeed provide for a hundred or so gathered folks with the 20 barley loaves and fresh grain donated by a local patron. This fellow has come through a famine with the means to share, and honor demands that he distribute the surplus to his needy neighbors. The prophet declares, thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there will be some left over. Similarly, Jesus calms his jittery disciples with clear instructions. Have the people recline, then proceed to take the loaves, give thanks, and distribute them along with the fish. The numbers add potency to the sign, since Jesus multiplies five barley loaves to feed 5,000 plus people. His final instruction directs the disciples to gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. The surprising abundance of leftovers, 12 wicker basketfuls, reveals God's overflowing love for these ragtag folks, the leftovers of society, who seek Jesus with hungry hearts. Jesus' actions, taking the bread, giving thanks, and distributing it, should sound familiar to us. We hear some version of them in the Eucharistic prayer each Sunday, just before the words of consecration. While John's Gospel does not include an account of the Lord's Supper, John 6, from which we read today, sings with Eucharistic overtones, Indeed, additional readings from John's so-called Bread of Life discourse will enrich our understanding of the Eucharist for the next three Sundays. Today's selection from Psalm 145 hints at liturgy as it calls forth from God's faithful ones thanksgiving, blessing of God, and the telling of God's mighty deeds the most potent form of praise in the Psalms. Note, Eucharist literally means thanksgiving. The refrain we sing over and over expands the breadth of God's providence beyond food. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Food provided in due season points to the Lord's trustworthy care of all who depend on him in trust and call upon him in truth. These last two words ring with significance. 
the Lord God, well known for just ways and holy works, recognizes truth and falsehood in human desire and patiently teaches those who trust in him the difference between needs and wants. Our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians urges us to embrace a truly countercultural way of living characterized by humility, gentleness, patience, and love aimed at unity and peace in the body of Christ. Imagine the abundant fruit of Eucharistic liturgy, Mass, enacted with this attitude. 